Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Bill to reinstate WASP pilots in Arlington Cemetery passes committee. The Honeywell helicopter sales forecast is out. Jefferson enhances flight deck pro features. I'm Bree Cross, it's March 2nd, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The House Veterans Affairs Committee last week passed legislation authored by Congresswoman Martha McSally that would restore the rights of the WASPs who were pioneering female World War II pilots to have their ashes and earned at Arlington National Cemetery, which is run by the U.S. Army. Arlington National Cemetery approved in 2002 active duty designees, including WASP pilots for military honors and inurnments. However, in March 2015, then Secretary of the Army John McHugh reversed this decision. Among other things, it was claimed there was not enough room at the cemetery for the inurnment of WASP pilots. Representative McSally said in part, quote, To be clear, this decision does not require legislation. The Army can restore the WASP's eligibility in Arlington right now, but they have refused, and in their shameful inaction, we are pressing forward. There are only roughly 110 WASP remaining alive. It is unconscionable that after decades of fighting for the recognition they earned, it is being stripped away from them in their final years. Her legislation has garnered 141 bipartisan co-sponsors in the House and the endorsement of half a dozen veterans, military, and women's advocacy groups. The helicopter industry is reacting with a cautious outlook for near-term new purchases. This is according to the 18th Annual Turbine Power Civil Helicopter Purchase Outlook produced by Honeywell Aerospace. Honeywell forecasts 4,300 to 4,800 civilian use helicopters will be delivered from 2016 to 2020, roughly 400 helicopters lower than the 2015 year forecast. Kerry Smith, the president of Defense and Space at Honeywell, said in part, quote, The current global economic situation is causing fleet managers to evaluate new helicopter purchases closely, and that's why we're seeing a more cautious five-year demand projection compared with previous years. Across the world, the Honeywell outlook shows that while the forecast in North America and Europe do not show a strong growth, it's a different story in Latin America and the Middle East where the demand for rotorcraft is up. The 2016 outlook presents a snapshot of the helicopter business at a point in time and reflects the current business and political environment. This year's survey queried more than 1,000 chief pilots and flight department managers of companies operating 3,070 turbine and 360 piston helicopters worldwide. After the break, Flight Deck Pro EFB for iOS and Windows. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Jefferson now offers airline, military, and large business aviation operators an enhanced version of its Flight Deck Pro electronic flight bag that is compliant with iOS 9 and Windows 10 operating systems. Jefferson says that among the improvements, airlines and other operators now have the ability to send company information directly to Flight Deck Pro as customer inserted charts and have it available for EFB use immediately instead of waiting for the next data cycle update. Another new capability enables importing routes from multiple data sources, including flight planning systems and third-party apps. Jefferson says that Flight Deck Pro streamlines the use of digital navigational information for airlines and other qualified operators, including terminal charts and data-driven in-route content. In a press release, Jefferson claims their data distribution solution is unique in the industry by providing the fastest data updates from the aviation industry's largest aeronautical database. With some 2,000 AeroTV programs webcast to cyberspace, 
Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. I find it was interesting to have the Disney characters, but it really gives you kind of a, a nice scenario and you've got to put that airplane through some paces to get the mission accomplished. Absolutely. In this video, we see a simulator developed by Redbird Simulation to give kids the thrill of flying Dusty, the lead character from the Disney movie Planes. ANN's Tom Patton shows you how it's done. Search just like the real thing on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Chinese company obtains U.S. type certificate. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Chinese company AVIC announced that their general purpose regional Y-12F aircraft has been granted an FAA type certificate. They say it is their first civil aircraft series to obtain the TCs of many countries like the US, UK and Russia. Aspen Avionics has announced that the EFD-1000 primary flight display system is now available as a factory option on the Cabri G2 helicopter. The French-made Cabri G2 helicopter is widely used by a number of helicopter pilot training schools. Pratt & Whitney Canada announced that it has extended the time between overhaul for its PW210 turboshaft engines from 3,500 to 4,000 hours. This will increase time on wing and reduce maintenance costs by over 10% for operators. Ryanair has filed a lawsuit in Los Angeles, but it doesn't really know against whom the suit is being filed. It's reported that the airline has received tweets recently threatening to blow up its airplanes. The perpetrators are identified as Doe's 1 to 100 in the suit. Four flights operated by Vietnam Airlines on February 16th were flown by all female crews. Vietnam Airlines has 10 female pilots and the airline says these flights were not scheduled intentionally to have the cockpit and cabin crews all female. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. After a hard landing was experienced by its prototype TH-180 helicopter in mid-February, Instrum Helicopter says there will only be a minimal delay in the certification of the aircraft. As ANN reported last month, the prototype TH-180 Instrum Helicopter N-180TH experienced a mechanical problem and made a forced landing. During the landing, the helicopter suffered damage, but the pilot, the only person on board, was uninjured. Preliminary investigation indicates that a piece of flight test instrumentation in the main drive system failed, disconnecting the engine from the drivetrain. Instrum's William Taylor said, quote, Instrum's second TH-180 flight test vehicle was already in production, and we are working on completion ahead of the original schedule. This aircraft is expected to begin flying in an April or May timeframe. By rearranging our certification flight test schedule, we anticipate this accident will cause only a minimal delay for the program. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.